Thank you very much, everyone. A special thank to all those people who work so hard with um, Ten Capital, Hall, and others for putting up this great show. Um, I certainly wish more people are here, but anyway, um, probably they'll hear about what they miss for not being here, right? What I'm going to be sharing with you would be a lot. Uh, it's going to be about our industry, it's going to be about the technology itself, maybe even a few good advice for those who are thinking about getting involved in this business. What I can tell you is it's going to be big, it's going to be huge, it's going to be bigger than the internet or the other technology revolution which started at the emergence of personal computer. I happen to have been involved in that personally. I was the founder of Dolphin Technology that created one of the most innovative, feature-rich handheld computer called the Dolphin DTR. I'm going to mix up some of my presentation with the next one because you'll be listening to me unless you walk away, of course, for 45 minutes. So the first part, is the company's presentation. And then I have a keynote speech that I'll share with you, which I'll be talking about micro payment, micro investment, and ICO is the way I see it, okay? Now, for those of you who are thinking of getting involved in this industry, it is not late. It is literally at the beginning of that. I've learned a great lesson God. When it comes to new technology, new industry that is starting, be very patient about it. Let other people pay the price for it. Make sure you learn all you can. Figure out what are the problems. God. There are always issues at the beginning. No matter how exciting it may sound, there are problems and it takes time for problems to be resolved. Technology always resolved. After a period of time, it will continue to evolve, and don't think you're the smartest of, of all, because there'll be a lot of other people who can come in and help solve the problem. It'd be best if they work with you or you work with them, because if not, they will take over, you'll be gone. Okay, and I'll be talking a little bit more about it. But let me tell you what Denotes and Denotes Global is all about. Sometimes people call me the revolutionary visionary. It's not that I can see things as far as the technology world goes, years and years ahead. But I have the tendency to think big, do big, and make sure that things are being done outside of the box. Just a little bit of an introduction. I got involved in the personal computer in the late 1980s, 89, 90, 91, 92, 92, all the way till 94. At that time, it's such a reminder of what is really going on in our industry right now. A few people make it big. You can charge a lot of money for ordering parts, put them together, and now you are a manufacturer of desktop computer. Remember those days? All of a sudden, in a matter of a year or so, there were tens of thousands of the finest manufacturer of personal computer that offer you the best pricing, the best services, and so on. And all they did was order housing, motherboard, power supply, whatever, from Hong Kong, from um, Taiwan, and here you are, okay? The same thing is happening to our industry. Blockchain, smart contract, ICO, you have any of those, especially last year, you can make a lot of money if you talk loud and fast, okay? But that will go away. So, when I got involved in December 2013, 
at the request of a friend asking me to give him an op opinion whether he should launch a digital currency, a cryptocurrency. I said, okay, I owe you that much. As a friend, I'll spend a couple of weeks and do some research on that. Guess what I found out? The right after that, I said, Joe, I won't touch it with a 10-foot pole. You know why? It's loaded with scam artists. I went from forum to forum, and they were all boys behaving badly. I don't know, maybe mom was working too long hours or whatever, okay? Nasty stuff. And then I questioned myself. Did I make the right recommendation? Because the technology itself is amazing, and I didn't even know enough yet. So I called him back the second day. I said, Joe, maybe I gave you the wrong advice. That advice was based on the culture of the industry and not the power of the technology. Listen to that and remember it, okay? It's two very different things. The culture is still notorious, is embarrassing, if you will. It's confusing. Those of you who are new to this industry, even this morning, after listening to so many speakers, even my head started spinning. There are just so much to know, okay? And so much going to be happening. So what is going to be happening is we will continue to get confused. There's a lot of smoke and mirror in our industry. So what is it that DNOTS and DNOTS Global is doing very differently? First, I have absolutely no doubt that we are witnessing the biggest technology revolution in the history of mankind, okay? I will share more on that with you during my second presentation. It is real, but there are a lot of issues, a lot of challenges we have heard about it. It's not just within our industry or the technology itself, but the compliance issue, whether people are breaking the law or not. And I can tell you, our company has personally spent a lot of money paying very high legal bills, trying to find out what is the right way to do it. And guess what? A lot of them, you know, how we get the best advice is we have to teach them first. I'm sorry, but that turned out to be the case. There are very few people in the legal profession who give you very sound advice. So take it slowly, take your time, make sure you do the right thing. So how is DNOTS doing it very differently? First of all, we are absolutely certain that we are witnessing a new world. The decentralized world is a new world we are not familiar with. That may explain why we are having so much legal complication, because quite frankly, as being explained earlier, a lot of the people that are supposed to be giving you sound advice are quite confused because we are dealing with a new entity that's called decentralized entity. By definition, a decentralized entity is leaderless, is governed by algorithm. So how do you regulate an entity that is leaderless? The SEC and our lawmaker will have to figure out. I believe it's possible, and I will talk about it a little bit later. So what we have done, excuse me, is we feel that the best way to handle it in a clean way is leave the decentralized entity, which is denotes the coin, okay? which was launched on February 18, 2014. is almost five years ago. And I bet you very few people have even heard of it. 
The difference is we refuse to palm and dump. We feel that building a trusted digital currency, because we are talking about finance, trust is invaluable in financial services. If you don't build up trust, that coin is not going to be worth much or worth a lot for too much longer. That is my opinion. It is extremely important that if there were going to be one digital currency or 10 digital currency, that one of the states will be adapted for global commerce as a medium of exchange, as a store of value. Some people can count on it, okay, that they will invest in it. They'll save it for college education. Trust become imperative. So what we are doing is, denotes the coin that was launched four and a half years ago is totally left alone. We haven't sold one denon as an investment for money, okay? In order to make sure that it's done very differently, we incorporated a separate company, for-profit company, Denots Global, okay? Denots Global is what I'm talking about. Denots Global has been launched, has been incorporated in the state of Delaware for over two years. And the reason for that is part of the requirement is because we have a whole series of funding, starting with Reg D 506C to raise $5 million. It's mostly for software development and to fund the next round of funding, which is using Reg A plus TIF for mini IPO, I mean mini IPO T2 under Title IV, okay? all those different acronyms. The reason that we picked this path is because we feel that that is the way to go. We are not there to be comfortable with a totally decentralized entity yet. You hear all kinds of terms about stalking, DOS, okay, DSO, even I get confused, okay? Have you heard of DSO? DSO stands for Digital Stalking Offering. Is that something new to you? That's going to be talked about a lot. But it's all a lot of smoke and mirror. The problem is we are not even sure. The only sure thing is we can work with our lawmaker to make sure they understand that eventually ICO will have to be regulated hopefully with reasonable and not burdensome registration so we can go forward, okay? So what we are about is that we form a company that would take care of the different businesses, different ecosystem that we believe would be critical to make sure that that currency, namely d -notes, will have the best chance of being an inclusive, trusted digital currency for global commerce one day. I got news for you. If you think that we already have way too many digital currency today, okay, there are probably 15,000 of them or more. Frankly, nobody knows because a lot of them are in the works. My prediction is there will be hundreds of thousands of digital currency one day. And you will notice that I don't use the word virtual currency, cryptocurrency, and so on. I believe that the right wording for it to describe what's going on is digital currency, digital cash. That is what we are talking about, okay? So we launched Denot's coin almost five years ago, on February 18, 2014, and yet very few people have heard about it. The big exchanges, they, they are not even listing us yet because funny thing happened. We decided to wait for a few years before we work on the blockchain of our own and so on. 
Okay, we launched Dino's coin as a proof of work. And then we waited for the technology to mature. And finally, the early this year, we launched Dino's 2.0. Guess what happened? The major exchange like Polynex, Cryptopia, and so on, where Dino's coin was listed, boom, you're gone because you're a different coin now. Pay out, okay? In the case of Cryptopia, we paid out, and nasty thing happened. They believe that Dino's coin, which hasn't sold one dollar worth of Dino's, is called under the New, New Zealand law where Cryptopia operate, is something to do with financial services. Those people have no clue what they're talking about. I don't know whether they needed more money or whatever. We paid them, and then they delisted that. So that's fine, OK? But that is the real world we are, we are facing. There is so much greed out there. It is incredible, OK? So for those of you who are new, understand that what Dino's Global is trying to do is do it very differently. Don't follow the other people because there will be so many me tools. It would be ridiculous. You know what I call a lot of them? They're like zombie. They would come in wave and wave. One wave got wiped out, the next one would be there. If you are starting your own business or so you're investing, look for those that are not part of the me too. You have to be innovative. You've got to do something that truly create value. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Okay. So we recognize that in order to make sure that people become comfortable with what the next generation of money is going to be, we have to make it real easy for them. So we created D not Vault, which is much more than a, a web wallet, because what we do there is we make it very easy for people to be able to store their denotes. And better yet, we are so confident of our security, we actually guarantee the deposit with matching fund. Who has heard about that? No one would do that unless you're absolutely sure that everything is secure. And better yet, Dnots 2.0 is designed in such a way that's a real-world application of blockchain. Every 30 days, if you don't move your account, if that, that amount is in your, your Dnots wallet for 30 days or more, our blockchain automatically pay you half or 1% so that you get a total of 6% per year. That is just for buying d notes and put it in your wallet. Now, again, I will be talking about micropayment later on, but let me just give you a very brief idea because this is part of our ecosystem. It's called Dnots Pay. Why is Dnots Pay so important? Because we know that our industry have been talking about micropayment for a long, long time, but there has not been any viable solution. We basically believe that micropayment when being perfected, okay, we are not quite there yet, okay, you can use Dnots Pay for the micropayment. We, I'm actually selling my book, include both the physical book and the audio book, using Dnots Pay. And you can buy Daily, which is a flower of a company that I helped found with Dnots through Dnots Pay. The whole concept is to make it so easy that anyone using WordPress can set up using Dnots Pay and accept Dnots literally within minutes, okay? And the reason that 
we are going to be throwing a lot of resources to make sure that D not pay is going to become one of the killer apps out there. It's because if you think about it, the whole thing about blockchain, about digital currency, is that for once, we are not limited to the rich guy, okay? We want everyone everywhere in the world, whether they have money or whether they, they are struggling to meet and meet, they can participate in that. And micropayment become extremely critical. Someone earlier mentioned about the subscription, okay? If subscription can be, can be um, know, monetized by the day, in so by the month, by the year, and so on, you need micropayment. So micropayment is going to be one of the very important things which we have been working on. We make a couple of announcements. It's working, but you know, a lot more will be done to make sure that it becomes si seamless with other payment systems as well. Okay. One other thing that we are really excited about and th the reason that we are raising have three different rounds of funding is because we believe that we will be seeing a lot of changes in the venture capital world. The way we see it is that for the first time, venture capital would allow participation from a lot more people than just a few rich guys or institutional investors and so on. And we believe that our group can be positioned to be much more interactive when it comes to funding company. And again, my discipline is any time I get involved in something, I don't want to rush into it. We'll take our time. Our first year, we may fund as many as three different companies, three different projects, along with other partners who would invest with us. And the way we are going to do it differently is to be able to help this company all the way from the ground up, work with them very closely, train their people who are involved in the project and so on. I have written a business book that's called Improve Your Odds, The Four Pillars of Business Success. And I know how difficult it is for many people who are starting a new project on how to run a company successfully. Most people fail. 80% of the businesses fail in their first 10 years. It is a very difficult thing to do. I've been there myself, okay? Failing in business after you invested your lifetime saving, along with those, along with money from your best friend and family, is a very painful thing to do but there are a lot of well-deserved entrepreneurs who like to see success. And I wrote a book based on the fact that most people are very good at one, two, or three things without realizing that to be successful in business, you got to know a whole lot more, okay? So Next Gen VC and our consulting group will be best a lot of that is based on the philosophy of my, my book and based on the philosophy that it is not difficult to succeed in business. You just have to do the right thing at the right time, the right way. If you can do all that, okay, if you're good across the board and you are the best in class in everything that matters, you will succeed, okay? your chances of failure would be only based on the uncontrollable. So that's what Next Gen VC is going to be about. And I think it's going to be very exciting. The book, I just talk about it. You ask people, what would it take to be, to be successful in business? They'll give you a whole list, okay? And what I decided after working with many different businesses in different industry is it boils down to four different things. It has to start with you. 
if I were investing, I would look at the top guy because everything starts with the top guy. You got to have a very clearly articulated vision that everyone will buy in. Everyone will understand and buy in. And that could be forced down all the way down to the bottom. No one in the company is at such a low position that that employee doesn't have to understand, share, and buy in to that vision. Very critical. The second thing is your idea, okay? We all have great ideas. I think many of you are here because you have a great idea. You say, I want to make it happen. I want to be in my own business. But a great idea is worth a cup of coffee if you agree to leave the tips, okay? That's how much a great idea is worth. Be very, very careful. Test it out. Be knowledgeable. Understand who you're competing with, whether you're truly passionate, because in business, based on what I have found out, after almost 50 years in business, is no matter what you wish for, it's going to cost you more money. It's going to take more time, and there will be more problems. Never, ever fail. Trust me on that. Okay, so it's very important. The second, the third thing is employee. Everyone wants to hire the best employee. I was in the management consulting business one time, and I often asked the question, what do you think is holding your company back? How could you have done better if something was different? What's your main reason that you are not way up there like you wish? You know the most common answer? Bad employees. Almost consistently, I hear that. So after some time, I got a little bit sick and tired of that. I said, let me ask you a question. How do you hire your employee? You put an ad in the local paper. This is over 10 years ago. Okay. I said, yeah, I put an ad in the, in the newspaper and then people apply for the job. So I said, what did you put in that advertisement? Bad employee wanted the worse, the higher the pay? Of course not. Okay. What happens is people don't realize it. A lot of the time, if you don't have the culture of grooming exceptional employee, you will end up with a lot of bad employees. So hire the best employee. Make sure that you have a culture of wanting the best in class. Truly grooming them to be the best in class and buy into your vision all the way down. Train them to be able to take care of the customer, which is the, the last one, number four, customer. You want every customer experience to be the greatest experience of all. And trust me, okay, if you would buy into that four principle and practice it religiously, you're the top down, it's all yours. You've got to be able to share your vision and get everyone to buy into it, then you will have the best chance of being successful. So that's what the book is, is about. It has been in print for a while, and we just make available an audio book. You can get a lot of different chapters, videos, and, and so on. I spend a lot of time on that and produce 70 videos. We full transcript. They are valuable all over. It's not just for money. It's a handbook for entrepreneurs. It's a handbook for Dinots Global. Dinots Global literally follow the four pillars of business success religiously, and that's how the company is built. We believe in education. One of our ecosystem is called Dinots EDU. You check into it, there are many, many different, very helpful articles about the digital currency industry, all kinds of things. 
the good things and the challenging one. So if you truly want to learn as much as you can about our industry, make sure you visit DNOTS EDU. DCE Brief is an online uh, magazine, if you will, specifically cover our industry and the general fintech area. Again, the reason we did that is because we feel that our industry needs a lot of help. It is still at the very early stage. It has a long way to go. It has a lot of educating to do. And part of the reason that one day I thought of that is because I got sick and tired of reading a lot of inaccurate articles, and I kept shaking my head. That cannot be. But the media has their own way of doing things. It's the freedom of press. You say what you want practically. So DNOT DCE Brief is doing very well. We have probably about 100 to 200,000 unique visitors a month. And it's growing rapidly. And partly because of that, quite frankly, I have a lot of people in the political leadership who link up with me on LinkedIn and make some very, very uh, complimentary remarks about what we are doing. Our industry needs help. It needs more reliable news. Crypto moms, this is a good one. Um, how many of you have read about a newly launched coin? Man, we are it. Everyone's going to, to use our coin, OK? But how? And it will continue that we are the one that will be accepted by the masses. We launched Crypto Moms four years ago based on the realization if you truly want your coin, denotes in this case, to be accepted by the masses, how could you leave the females of the world alone? They control over 50% of the buying power. I have my wife Lucy there. I think she controls 80% of my buying power. So we feel that even though at this time, the percentage of female population in our industry is probably no more than 6 7% at best. When Crypto Mom was launched four years ago, it was probably 4 or 5%. It's coming along, but very slowly. And since we are very serious about mass adoption of denotes, we believe that we have to, to make a very dedicated effort to help assist and encourage female participation. Crips. If digital currency were to replace fiat currency, and by the way, I don't believe it will for generations. I wouldn't say never. It will take a long, long time. Let's get real, OK? The first thing that's likely to happen is digital currency may supplement fiat currency in a few of the more friendly nations. That, I believe, will happen, hopefully in my lifetime yet. But anyway, if digital currency is going to be the future of money, why not save digital currency, just like the way you would have a saving account using fiat currency? So we started CRIPS, which stands for Cryptocurrency Investment Savings Plan, about three and a half years ago. We probably have about 3,000 different accounts people use as a saving account. And they would buy d notes and then would deposit that d notes very conveniently at the d notes wall. And now, of course, those accounts would be automatically paid through the blockchain 6% a year or at half a percent per month. OK. Funding. We talk about it, and that will conclude uh, this section. We feel that 
in order to fund this massive project, which I often describe that the DNOS project is a big and bold idea of global scale. The only way we can make all those happen, okay, whatever infrastructure that we talk about are already in place. Many of them have been around for a few years. But going forward, we will need a lot more to be done, including having our own exchange, a very different kind of exchange, which we have not dis disclosed too much yet. Believe it or not, part of our ecosystem will also include a bank and partner banks, as well as multi-currency card. And all those things will take very substantial funding. The way we are doing it, we are not talking about ICO, and DNOT's coin is not involved. This is the real world for-profit company. But all those funding rounds must be lined up starting out with Reg D, 506C, which we heard about a little bit earlier. The next round, we would be one of the very first to make full use of Reg A+, mini IPO, um, Title IV, Tier two, that will allow us to raise up to $50 million. And here is the deal, okay? Just raising money using Reg D, 506C, it's not going to help you that much if that's all you're doing. How many investors you end up having? Couple dozen? It doesn't matter. If, if your shares or your token, in our case, is common stock share, it's going to be traded or not. How do you trade that? It's the reason that ICO became so popular is because it would allow global participation. Anyone, anywhere in the world can buy and sell, okay? It gives you instant uh, participation on a global basis. It gives you instant exit strategy, if that's what you have in mind. It gives you instant liquidity, which is amazing for business. If you want to start a new project, or expand your company and so on. So the funding is, is going to be very critical. And here are the real thing. The book is real, OK? I even have copies outside there by our table, OK? We have an audio book. It's available uh, in many different places, of course, including Amazon, audio books, and so on. And those are the different property. The book, Crypto Moms, Denotes EDU, Denotes Coinisa, Denotes Vault, DC Brief, all these things are for real. Except, I would bet that none of you, maybe except Zoko, even heard of my name. Okay. This is the very early stage, it's a very big world, a lot needs to be done and there are a lot of opportunity out there. Okay, so that is the first part of my presentation. I will have my keynote coming up. In the meantime, question. Yes. Yes. Um, the currencies, replacing the uh, fiat currencies is not possible fully. There will be always the American dollar, doesn't matter how far and how much except that these uh, cryptocurrencies become. And the reason for that is to pay my taxes, uh, which is a, a must for everyone, the paying the taxes, I have to have US dollar. The American government won't accept any other form of payment for US taxes that I need to pay. That is why American uh, dollar will always have a value. And American dollar, the second part of the value comes, 
is it is interoperability. If I have a Turkish lira, I cannot exchange it with uh, Kuwait dinar unless I have a US dollar in between to make the transition easy um, or possible. Uh, yes, and that is why um, that is why I'm interested in your view. Um, how you see that one thing that everyone will use um, that is going to be implied with these um, uh, cryptocurrencies that is going to be if make that cryptocurrency such a value point that can be used for these kind of exchanges? Yeah, I think that's a very long question, but a very interesting one. And it, it has to do with the conversion of one asset to another, in this case, you call it currency, right? Uh, let me put it this way. For the most part, you are able to trade the value, okay? It's an exchange of value. I mean, it depends on how you want to convert it. There's always an on-ramp and off-ramp, right? In this case, you know, for the most part, you would be able to, to buy Bitcoin and use Bitcoin to buy almost uh, what, hundreds, if not a thousand different digital currency. Okay. The way I see it is one of these days, uh, all this thing will become easier and easier in terms of the exchange of one currency or one the digital asset of value for another, okay? So what Dino's vision is in addressing that particular vision is to, to make sure that in a very crowded market, I've said earlier, okay, if you think 15,000 digital currency is a lot and it's awfully confusing, think about a few hundreds of thousands of digital currency, okay? I will address that a little bit um, in my next presentation, but trust me, that is more likely to be for real than not. If not, we are all kidding ourselves that blockchain technology and so on is going to continue to explore, okay? Except the next, next wave, and there will be many, many waves keep coming, it will be our established company that already have proven asset and maybe some great projects that are coming out. Again, the reason that, that there will be so many is because digital asset is going to be the future. We are already in a digital age. So what happened is anything that can be digitized is going to be digitized and it's being represented to be certain amount of value uh, based on the free market, based on whatever exclusive club and so on. So you're, you talk about the American Express, whatever, it's a representation of value. The beautiful thing about blockchain is it allows you to transfer that asset of value to anyone, anywhere in the world, okay? Irrespective of the amount, it can be microtransaction, which is why where it comes in. And while microtransaction, to give you, you know, just a, a little introduction of that could only happen if that currency, that asset of value is stable. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, is there a mic here? Because it's. Is there a microphone? Yeah. Yeah, and so. Otherwise, and, it's. So, and I this, would is, only this is going to be uh, the final question for this session, and then we're going to. Uh, and then uh, Ling's going to come on, and then after the panel, we can. We can uh, move back to the keynote. Piece, okay. okay, yeah. Um, what's, what differentiates you between like Litecoin or Digibyte or uh, Bitcoin Cash? Oh, okay. excuse me, I, I didn't quite hear that. What, what differentiates you between Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and uh, Digibyte for, in terms of micropayments? Okay, so if I understand correctly, is what's the difference between D nodes in Litecoin, uh, Bitcoin and so on. Um, let me be real honest about it. Uh, all the digital currency, 
okay, are basically a version of Bitcoin. Okay, and Bitcoin uh, was created by Satoshi Nakamoto or whatever the heck his name is. Okay, so people can make all kinds of representation that our digital currency is really different. There isn't a whole lot more to it other than downloading the original uh, version of blockchain being developed in many different generations. It's a human being, okay? It's a Bitcoin, and it's a version of that. We are, we are descendant of Bitcoin, okay? So whether you call it Litecoin, Bitcoin, whatever, Mooncoin, whatever, it doesn't matter, okay? It's basically the best thing that it can do. It allows the issuance of a currency, in this case, d -notes. And if people want d -notes, then d -notes has value. If I have it, you want it, then you know, you've got to agree on a certain price. That's called the representation of value. The best thing about that technology is it allowed for the creation, for the issuance of a currency, whatever you want to call it, okay? And then it allowed for a global payment system, which means if I want to send some d notes to you, and I can send it to you directly, which has significant implications because unlike money that we sent before, I have to uh, go through. That was an excellent presentation. We'll look Got to it. see you back in a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.